they led Jesus there. Gospel of the Lord. A man walk into a cross shop one day. He complained that his cross was too heavy and rough, and he needed a new one. So he tried out all kinds of crosses, but found each one unsatisfactory, either too short, too rough, too smooth too heavy or too light. Then he found one that he felt just right and he took it. But the shop owner was somewhat disappointed and told him, Sir, that was the cross you came in with. Sisters and brothers, can you see your cross as a blessing. Not easy, huh? See your cross as a blessing. Understood from the perspective of faith, that cross is actually the purifying fire of the Spirit. There is no sanctification without purification. And that cross is precisely the purifying and sanctifying fire of the Spirit. Have you ever rejoiced in your sufferings as St. Paul did? He told the Colossians chapter 124, I rejoice when I suffer for you. Of course, some of you can say, I rejoice when I suffer for my spouse. I rejoice when I suffer for my family. Or when I suffer for my friends. St. Paul continues, I complete in my own flesh what is lacking in the sufferings of Christ for the sake of his body, which is the church. I rejoice when I suffer for the community, for the church, the body of Christ. Wow, can I say that, huh? It's so much easier to say that I suffer for my family, my family, my spouse, my children, but for the community, for others, not easy. There are two ways that reveal true love. The first consists in doing good to the beloved. The second, which is more superior, is suffering for the beloved. Good Friday is about the transforming power of this suffering love, or you may call it crucified love. It takes two pieces of wood to make a cross, and that is important for us today as we celebrate Good Friday and venerated the cross afterwards. Of course, we have the vertical stick, vertical stick, which represents God's love for us. God so loved the world, so loved you and me, that He sent His only Son, Jesus, to suffer and die for us. Beaten, scorned, Love and torture. He accepted it all out of love for us. 
He took upon Himself all our sins, our faults. He, the Lamb of God, willingly suffered for us to free us from the consequences of our own sins. Father Ron Rohelser, a very popular columnist for Herald, he has an interesting reflection of Jesus as the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Jesus took away sin by absorbing and transforming sin. How? He uses the image of a water filter. A water filter takes in impure water, holds the impurities inside of itself, and gives back only pure water. It transforms rather than transmits. We see this in Jesus like the ultimate cleansing filter. He purifies life itself. He takes in hatred, holds it, transforms it, and gives back love. He takes in fear, holds it, transforms it, and gives back freedom. He takes in jealousy or envy, holds it, transforms it, and gives back affirmation. He takes in Satan and murder, holds them, transforms them, and gives back only God and forgiveness. The Garden of Gethsemane invites us to help absorb purified and transform all the tensions and sins rather than simply transmit them to other people. If we don't know, if we refuse to absorb, to purify and transform them, then we will naturally transmit them to other people. Next, we have the horizontal stick. You see the cross vertical, now the horizontal represents God's call for us to love one another as He loved us. Love your neighbor. It is our response to God's love in Jesus and completes the cross. This is not the cross. This is not the cross. The cross is like that. Huh? There are two horizontal arms to the cross and two ways that we can love one another. Two arms. See, left and the right. Left and the right. The first arm of the cross is relationship. Relationship. God's greatest hurt, God's greatest hurt is our broken relationships, our strained relationships. And so common part of our life, even in the family. It's essential that we learn to love, to forgive, accept one another. Otherwise, our religion and professed belief is a sham. So how can we claim to love God yet go on being rude to each other, accuse each other, put each other down, gossip badly about each other, avoid each other, stay away from gatherings because of our aversion and fear of each other? So many of us have still not yet learned the most basic truth of our faith, that what we do to the least of our brothers and sisters or what we neglect to do, we do to Jesus, we neglect to do to Jesus. So how we get along with each other, with other people in relationship, 
is the measure of our relationship with God. The second arm is service. God's message through the cross is that we must humbly serve one another. We witnessed that yesterday, Holy Thursday, in the washing of the feet. It is not easy, difficult, challenging, very challenging to make sacrifice and suffer for the sake of others, for the sake of the community. Sacrificial love, suffering love, or crucified love, or this is a superior form of love. Not easy to be like St. Paul who can say, I rejoice when I suffer for you. I rejoice. How to rejoice? Heartbroken man, cannot sleep man. Here I rejoice when I suffer for you. When I suffer for the body of Christ. When I suffer for the sake of the gospel, when I suffer for my beloved. But that is what the cross means. Jesus assures us what it means by accepting the sufferer and died on the cross for us. So the bottom line of following Jesus is that we must let go of our hunger for glory for honor, for power and control, for recognition, and learn to serve one another, even as a donkey, in the family, in our neighborhood, in the church community, in society. So sisters and brothers, just be mindful of that when you venerate the cross afterwards, the vertical and the horizontal dimension. Vertical is God's love for us. That we respond to God's love in the horizontal dimension, the left and the right arm, love and service. <clears throat>